All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Chem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. This is episode six, The Function of the Bent Pyramid. I have a ton of material to cover in today's video. The Bent Pyramid is a perplexing and fascinating ancient structure, and I will do my best to do it justice. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem are now available on my website, which is www.thelandofchem.com. It is an absolutely beautiful collector's edition of this book. Uh, again, if you'd like to pick up your copy today, just visit my website. I really, really appreciate it and uh, thank you in advance. Okay, so for a brief introduction to today's video, the function of the bent pyramid and the reason for its construction, I will go to a quote from the land of Chem from the chapter, the third degree. A query, our brethren of the order of Chem understood that management of the ammonia being manufactured in the red pyramid would present many challenges from long distance transportation to storage and application. Before being suitable for these purposes, the gaseous and dissolved forms of ammonia required conversion into a solid state chemical. The bent pyramid was therefore constructed alongside the red pyramid, capitalizing on the proximity of these two facilities for the production of this more practical compound. So even in today's modern industrial process for the manufacture of ammonia, they still harvest the carbon dioxide that is produced as a byproduct of that manufacturing. And that carbon dioxide is utilized within a facility that is located next to your ammonia plant for the production of either urea or ammonium bicarbonate. So again, even in today's modern manufacturing process, they are still utilizing the same techniques for the manufacture of chemicals that was utilized by the ancient civilization that constructed the Egyptian pyramid. All right, in episode four, I provided a detailed explanation as to the function of the red pyramid which was utilized to produce an aqueous ammonia solution. Now, I won't go into a detailed explanation as to that structure's function today. If you'd like to check out that video, it is here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. But the production of ammonia inside the Red Pyramid began with methane gas, and that methane gas was produced within the stepped pyramid of Saqqara. That process started by collecting the agricultural scrap material and cattle manure raw materials from throughout Egypt's farmlands. And those raw materials were regularly delivered to the steppe pyramid throughout the summer. Again, that process that became symbolically represented by the sacred dung rolling beetle, the scarab. Now within the steppe pyramid, again, those raw materials were uh, mixed with water to produce a slurry. And from that slurry, the methane gas was created. So a portion of that methane gas would have been collected directly and utilized for domestic and industrial applications. A portion of that methane gas would have been transported via the underground shaft system to the Red Pyramid and utilized for the production of the aqueous ammonia solution inside the Red Pyramid. Now, again, that ammonia is a ubiquitously useful industrial chemical. So you would have collected a portion of that directly from the Red Pyramid, and the remainder would have been transported from the Red Pyramid to the Bent Pyramid. This is definitely one of my favorite pictures from my 2020 research trip to Egypt. And this is the Step Pyramid of Saqqara here on the right. And in the distance on the horizon, you can see the Red and Bent Pyramids of Dashur. Now these structures indeed have a connection visually on the landscape. So when you arrive at the Step Pyramid, you can see the Red Pyramid in the distance. And when you get to the Red Pyramid, you can see the Bent Pyramid. And I believe this was done architecturally to indicate that there was a connection between the function of these structures. Now, the theory within the land of Chem is that each of the pyramids is connected via a system of subterranean shafts, which run below the landscape. So when we were visiting the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara in 2020, there were a team of archeologists on site excavating a newly discovered shaft system in Saqqara. So there are new things being unearthed in Egypt every day. And I do believe that if we could see what is underneath the sands of the Sahara 
it would be equally as impressive as what we see above ground. And so that old hermetic axiom, the principle of correspondence, as above, so below, um, that theme is somewhat repeated within the narrative of the land of Chem. As it is true with the rest of the universe, so it is true with the Egyptian pyramids and the constructions here in Egypt that again, what you see above ground is only half of what had been accomplished. There is indeed an intricate system of subterranean shafts and other structures below the landscape. Um, so again, this picture just kind of shows that visual connection on the landscape, which again, I do believe was intended to imply that there was a connection in their function. All right, this is an amazing picture from our day when we toured the pyramids of Dashur. And you can see here the red pyramid on the left and the bent pyramid in the distance. So there is also a connection between the red and bent pyramids in terms of the geometry utilized in their construction. So the tapering portion at the top of the bent pyramid is the exact same geometry utilized in the red pyramid. And again, I do believe that this was done by the architects and engineers that designed these structures to imply that there is a connection in the function of these two structures. Again, it's a very beautiful sacred geometry utilized in the design of these pyramids. Again, if you'd like to check out a detailed video explaining that geometry, I highly recommend a visit to the Sacred Geometry Decoded channel. Shout out to Alan. He does a great job explaining Again, the connection between the geometry of the red pyramid and the bent pyramid, which again, I believe was intended to imply the connection and the function of these two structures. All right, so the next few images will give you an introduction to the exterior of the bent pyramid. And this structure is definitely one of my favorite pyramids in Egypt. Um, I included this photo so you can see how truly immense this structure really is. It is by far one of the most impressive and imposing pyramids in Egypt. Now, it is very unfortunate that within the conventional narrative of Egyptology, that the Bent Pyramid is very much a forgotten and neglected structure, which is very unfortunate because they believe that the Bent Pyramid was an architectural failure and it was never intended or satisfactory for a pharaonic burial. So they pretty much exclude it from the general narrative of again, conventional Egyptology. But there is absolutely nothing about this structure that is a failure. If anything, it is a triumph of architecture, engineering, masonry, physics, and chemistry. And it is indeed an insult to the architects and engineers that designed this structure that today, again, it has been so forgotten and neglected within the narrative of Egyptology. But again, the intention of today's video is to give you an introduction to the true purpose of this structure, which again, I hope will do justice um, to again, those who designed this magnificent ancient structure. All right, this picture is from my 2020 research trip to Egypt. And during this trip, I finally got a chance to go inside the Bent Pyramid and investigate its inner chambers. Now, the structure was closed to the public for many, many years prior to 2020, but has finally been reopened. And it was a truly amazing experience to finally get inside this mysterious ancient structure and again, finally investigate its, its inner chambers in person. So the Bent Pyramid is one of my favorite structures in Egypt. And I believe that one of the biggest deficiencies regarding the alternative theories that circulate regarding the Egyptian pyramids is that they focus exclusively on the Great Pyramid of Giza. Now, the main theory about the Great Pyramid is that it was utilized to produce electricity. Okay, so that's all well and good. But if the Great Pyramid was producing electricity, what did all the rest of the pyramids in Egypt do, right? So the land of Chem and the theory contained within the land of Chem is the only one that provides a comprehensive overview of the function of each major Egyptian pyramid. So in this story, I talk about the function of the Step Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, the Pyramids of Giza, and the Passage Chamber structures of Ireland. And to my knowledge, there is no other theory that provides, again, a comprehensive overview of each structure's function. So I think that by focusing on one structure specifically, you lose sight of the bigger picture. And I do believe that by 
analyzing the Egyptian pyramids from the perspective of chemistry that we can truly begin to better understand their true purpose. All right, this is a great picture that uh, shows me walking around the outside of the Bent Pyramid. And you can see here the remaining casing stones on the northeastern corner of the structure. And just look here at the edge that is still on these remaining casing stone. It is really, really impressive. And I wanted to include this picture so you can see what it's like to be up close to the Bent Pyramid. Now, when I was looking at this remaining edge of these casing stones, I began to imagine what this structure would have looked like in its pristine condition. It is an amazing and very entertaining exercise of the imagination to conceive of how majestic these structures really would have been in their original condition. You know, the shimmering casing stone, these pristine razor sharp edges. And I included this within the narrative of the land of Chem to kind of share my experience of what it's like to be up close to the Bent Pyramid. So the edges of the shimmering white limestone casing were razor sharp and the slope angle of the sides gently decreased toward the upper part of the pyramid. This was the closest a quarry had been to these intimidating structures. And from below, the immense base of the pyramid seemed to disappear as it tapered into the starry night sky above. So again, you do see that old hermetic axiom, the principle of correspondence as above, so below, here again in the narrative of the land of Chem. And this is truly what it's like to stand next to the bent pyramid when you're at the base of this thing, again, that tapered portion at the top just disappears into the sky and it's a, it's a truly amazing experience. So I wanted to share that. All right, now that I have provided an overview of the Bent Pyramid, we can begin to evaluate its components. So let's start here at number five on this diagram, which is your Nile River Inlet. Now these river temples were utilized to deliver water to the external reservoir surrounding the pyramids through the causeway system. So let's evaluate the Bent Pyramid's external reservoir and note that the reservoir surrounds the satellite pyramid on the south side of the structure. Now here at number three, you also have another satellite structure on the eastern side of the Bent Pyramid, which is very similar to the satellite structure on the eastern side of the Red Pyramid and they have a very similar function, which is as a reservoir inlet valve. Now, looking at number one, you can begin to see the interior components of the Bent Pyramid. And there are two separate systems within the Bent Pyramid. You have your upper primary reaction system and your lower separation chambers. Now that lower separation chamber system consists of a dual chamber system and you will note here that there is a shaft leading to the west side of the Bent Pyramid and a shaft leading to the north side of the Bent Pyramid. Now on the right side of this diagram, you can just see a few 3D representations showing the configuration of the Bent Pyramid. And again, you can see that there is some very sophisticated engineering that went into the design of this structure. And it is most certainly not a failure. Again, if, if anything, it is a absolute triumph. All right, on this slide, you can see just a close up of the Bent Pyramid's internal configuration. So again, at point number seven, we have that causeway delivering water to the external reservoir. The external reservoir, which surrounds the satellite pyramid on the south side of the structure, your reservoir inlet valve here at number six. At number three, you have your upper primary reaction system. Number two is your lower separation chamber system, four being your western shaft and number one being your northern shaft. All right, now that I have introduced the configuration of the Bent Pyramid, we can start to assess some of its individual components. So let's start with the satellite pyramid on the south side of the structure. Now I am absolutely fascinated by this little satellite pyramid. The physics that are involved in its operation are some of the most sophisticated that have been discovered throughout the history of humanity and they are still very much applicable and utilized today. So this picture is from 2017 and the next picture is from 2020 when we finally got a chance to go inside the satellite pyramid 
of the bent pyramid of Dashur. Diagram, you can see the internal configuration of the bent pyramid's satellite pyramid, which has three major components. You have this northern shaft system, you have a central vaulted chamber located inside the structure, and there is a secondary shaft system leading out of the bottom of this central chamber. I mentioned that in our 2020 research expedition, I did get a chance to go inside the satellite pyramid, and this picture here on the left is showing the upper vault of the central chamber located inside this structure. Now, as with all of the Egyptian pyramids, there are some very anomalous details about this little satellite pyramid. And you will notice here the pattern of staining on each tier of this vault. And notice at the bottom of the vault, the staining pattern is very wide and it gets more and more narrow as you get toward the upper portion of the chamber. So again, a very unusual detail located inside this satellite pyramid. And here on the right, I was actually pulling out my phone to take a picture of that secondary shaft system that goes out of the bottom of this chamber. And I had my phone on a selfie, so I got a great picture of my goofy face inside this satellite pyramid. Um, but again, I was taking a picture of the shaft system that goes out of the bottom of this central chamber. All right, so how did the satellite pyramid of the bent pyramid function? Recall from the beginning of the video that the satellite pyramid was enclosed within the external reservoir surrounding the bent pyramid. So that would mean that this entire pyramid was partially submerged in water, which would also mean that its interior components were also completely filled with water. So long story short, the bent pyramid's satellite pyramid functioned like a hydraulic press, which was utilized to control the movement of two stone valves located inside the main pyramid. Now, if you'd like a detailed explanation as to how this structure function, definitely pick up a copy of The Land of Chem. I will keep it brief for today's video. Now, I wanted to point out another very anomalous detail located inside the satellite pyramid. There is a deposit of this very unusual crystalline material located inside the structure at the very bottom of this northern shaft. And it only covers about a four to six foot section of the shaft. And you would have to take a sample of this material and do a chemical analysis to determine its composition. We certainly did not have special permission from the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities to be taking any samples, but I would be very interested to learn what this was. Again, a very anomalous detail located inside the satellite pyramid. All right, on this slide, you can see the configuration of the Western shaft located inside the bent pyramid. And again, you can see the housing of the two stone valves, which were controlled by the satellite pyramid hydraulic press. Now, quick shout out to the ACIDA project. This diagram was taken from their website. They also toured with Yusuf while they were in Egypt and they have some exceptional research material on their website. So I just want to give a quick shout out to the ACIDA project. Again, I did not create the majority of these diagrams. They came directly from the ACIDA project website. Again, a quick introduction to the configuration of the Bent Pyramid's Western shaft system. On this slide, you can see a couple pictures of the stone valves I mentioned, which are located within the Bent Pyramid's Western shaft system. Now, this picture here on the left is from my 2020 research expedition, and the picture on the right is from the ACIDA project. I believe they went back in 2015. Now, you can see on the right, they toured this structure when it was still off limits to the public. And now that that structure has been reopened, they built some nice new wooden floors in here and, of course, built a gate, which prevents people from climbing over this stone valve into the western shaft. Um, but again, you can see the difference of what it looked like back then and what it looked like today. But we have covered the internal configuration and the function of the satellite pyramid. We can now take a journey inside the bent pyramid. So on this diagram, you can get a quick introduction to the interior components of the bent pyramid. And again, you can see here on the upper left, this is your upper primary reaction system. And here on the bottom right, you have your lower separation chamber system. I really like this 3D diagram of the bent pyramid because you can very clearly see 
all of the interior components. Now, I keep mentioning that the Bent Pyramid is one of my favorite structures. Again, the engineering that went into the design of this structure is absolutely amazing. It is very, very sophisticated. And again, to imply that the Bent Pyramid was in any way a failure is an absolute travesty and an insult to these amazing architects and engineers. They were absolutely geniuses. And again, the Bent Pyramid is one of the most fascinating structures in Egypt. I absolutely love this thing. Um, so again, I really like this 3D diagram, which clearly shows all of the interior components. This slide, you can see the interior configuration of the Bent Pyramid's upper primary reaction chamber. And here on the left side of this diagram, you can see that the chamber was originally engineered with a very precise tiered vault system, similar to what we see inside the Red Pyramid. And at some point during the operation of this structure, very significant erosion began to occur inside the chamber. Now, you may be asking yourself, what could have possibly caused erosion inside the chambers located within one of these pyramids? Now, inside the Bent Pyramid, there is erosion in the upper primary reaction chamber and also within the lower separation chamber. Again, I mentioned that that lower separation chamber is a dual chamber system and there is only erosion in the lower portion of that separation chamber. And I'll get into the reason for that here in just a moment. But again, you can see the original configuration of the structure and the erosion that has occurred inside the chamber. Now these two diagrams here on the middle just show the reconstruction that was done inside this chamber by the dynastic Egyptians. And I will get into that in the next slide. All right, on this diagram, you can see a close up of the Bent Pyramid's upper primary reaction chamber and the reconstruction that was done within the chamber by the dynastic Egyptians. Now you can see that there are Lebanese cedar beams located inside this chamber and a wall or platform that has been constructed inside the chamber by the dynastic Egyptians. Now I say that this was done by the dynastic Egyptians because they have done radiocarbon dating of these Lebanese cedar beams, which dates back to the dynastic Egyptian period. Now this does not mean that the structure was built by the dynastic Egyptians. There is a very significant difference between the quality of the masonry involved in this wall or platform when compared to the masonry of the chamber itself. It is a night and day difference. This platform is made using very, very small blocks when compared to the massive me megalithic stone that is utilized in the construction of the chamber, which implies to me that the chamber was constructed first. And again, the reconstruction was done inside the chamber by the dynastic Egyptians. This picture is from the Asita Project's visit inside the Bent Pyramid, and you can see here at the bottom left side of this picture, the very small kind of simple blocks that were utilized in the construction of the platform inside this chamber, and it is nowhere close to the quality of the masonry or the size of the stone utilized in the construction of the chamber. Now those Lebanese cedar beams located inside this chamber have absolutely no purpose whatsoever in terms of the construction of this chamber. They are not integral in terms of support of the structure. And again, I think this is an indication that it was added later and the cedar beams were actually a portion of that platform and not involved in the construction of the chamber itself. But you can also see in this picture the significant erosion that has occurred inside this chamber. These walls are very smooth when originally we see it had that precise tiered vault system. So again, what caused this erosion inside the Bent Pyramid's upper primary reaction chamber? Well, we'll get to that here in just a moment. And here's a picture of the upper vault or what is remaining of the upper vault inside the Bent Pyramid's upper primary reaction chamber. Again, you can very clearly see the erosion that has occurred inside this chamber. That we have reviewed the Bent Pyramid's upper primary reaction chamber, we can now move to its lower separation chamber system. Now at the top left of this diagram, you can see that there is a connecting shaft which leads from the upper chamber system 
into the lower chamber system. Now, again, I mentioned that these lower separation chambers are a system, a dual chamber system. So again, you have your upper separation chamber and your lower separation chamber. Now here at the center of this diagram, you again can see that reconstruction that was done by the dynastic Egyptians. But again, I do believe this implies that the structure and the chambers existed first and the dynastic Egyptians repurposed these structures when they came around much later. Now, this picture here on the right side of this slide, you can see the upper portion of the vault of the lower separation chamber. And this is this portion right here of this lower separation chamber. And you can see the significant erosion inside this lowest separation chamber. So again, there's erosion inside the upper primary reaction chamber and also in the lowest separation chamber. So why is there erosion in this upper reaction chamber and this lowest separation chamber, but not in the upper separation chamber? So we'll get to that here in just a moment. Left, you can see the upper vault of the upper separation chamber. And this is this portion right here on the top left of this diagram. Now, so when you go inside the bent pyramid, you go in through the northern shaft. You go down into the northern shaft, descending into the structure. You climb a staircase, which leads from the lowest separation chamber into the upper separation chamber. And then you ascend this large wooden staircase, which goes into the upper vault of the upper separation chamber. You go through the connecting passage into the upper primary reaction chamber system. So when you enter the structure, you go in through the north and up to the top but the reaction process inside the bent pyramid started with the upper primary reaction chamber. So we will start with that now. All right, so now that we have a thorough understanding of the configuration of the bent pyramid, I can begin to explain exactly how this structure operated. So let's recall from the function of the red pyramid that we had two solutions being collected from that structure. You had your aqueous ammonia solution product and a solution containing the dissolved carbon dioxide, which was produced as a byproduct of the manufacture of the ammonia. So again, we have the aqueous ammonia solution and a solution containing the dissolved carbon dioxide. So step number one in the operation of the bent pyramid involves activation of the satellite pyramid hydraulic press to close the stone valve located closest to your primary reaction chamber. And I'm gonna call that stone valve number one. So step number one is activation of the satellite pyramid hydraulic press to close stone valve number one. After you have closed this stone valve, you can then begin to fill your primary reaction chamber with the aqueous ammonia solution. Now, please keep in mind that today's video is just intended as an introduction to the operation of the bent pyramid. I am leaving out some details for those of you that wanna pick up a copy of the book and also for some future videos where I intend to give an in-depth explanation of the function of each component. But today we will just do a brief overview. So again, we're filling the primary upper reaction chamber with the aqueous ammonia solution. So the next step is gonna be utilization of that carbon dioxide solution. Now within the narrative of the land of chem, I propose that the carbon dioxide solution reached an extraction facility where that solution was heated to release the dissolved carbon dioxide gas. Now, I do believe that the reaction would still proceed if you were to use both of the reactants in the aqueous solution, but nonetheless, within the story of the land of chem, we are extracting that carbon dioxide gas and utilizing it in its gaseous form. So again, you have your primary reaction chamber which is filled with your aqueous ammonia solution. So step number three will be to percolate that carbon dioxide gas up through your ammonia solution. And that reaction between the ammonia and carbon dioxide will produce solid ammonium bicarbonate. Now, ammonium bicarbonate is a water soluble compound, which will remain in solution as the reaction proceeds until the solution has reached saturation, at which point 
that solid compound will begin to precipitate out of the solution. So now going back to the erosion in the upper primary reaction chamber, I believe that the production of this solid precipitate is what gradually caused the erosion inside that chamber. So again, even if you had something like salt water inside one of these limestone chambers, the gradual production of this compound and the circulation of the fluid throughout the chamber gradually would have caused the erosion of these limestone walls. And I will explain why that occurred only in the lower separation chamber here in just a moment. So again, you have your solution being produced, uh, which contains your solid ammonium bicarbonate precipitate in your upper primary reaction chamber. So, one, so again, in your upper primary reaction chamber, you have a reaction between your ammonia and carbon dioxide, which is producing a solution of ammonium bicarbonate. So after that solution has been produced, you can then activate your satellite pyramid hydraulic press to close stone valve number two and open stone valve number one. So after opening stone valve number one, the solution containing your dissolved ammonium bicarbonate will flow from your upper primary reaction chamber through the western shaft and connecting shaft system into your lower separation chamber. So that solution, again, containing the dissolved ammonium bicarbonate will fill your lower separation chamber system. Now, as that solution begins to cool, the ammonium bicarbonate precipitate will begin to settle at the bottom of your lower separation chamber. Now, again, I believe that the accumulation of this solid compound precipitate within the upper primary reaction chamber and the lower separation chamber is what caused this erosion. Now, again, the concentration of this solid precipitate would have been much higher in your upper primary reaction chamber and your lower separation chamber as that solution began to separate. Here in your upper separation chamber, you would have had relatively clear water containing carbon dioxide. And again, that solid ammonium bicarbonate precipitate is gonna settle at the bottom of your lower separation chamber and the carbon dioxide will begin to rise into the upper portion of your upper separation chamber. Now, once, now once your slurry containing your dissolved ammonium bicarbonate and any solid precipitate has been created, you can then extract it from your lowest separation chamber. And you can see here on this diagram that there is indications of a shaft that lead out to the south. When I was inside this chamber, there's also indications of a shaft that lead out to the east. But nonetheless, the solution was extracted from your lowest separation chamber. Again, this solution is more or less a slurry containing dissolved ammonium bicarbonate and your solid ammonium bicarbonate precipitate. Now, after your slurry containing your ammonium bicarbonate precipitate has been extracted from the pyramid, that solution can then be filtered and dried, leaving you with a solid ammonium bicarbonate compound, which again is a solid high nitrogen content fertilizer, which can be very easily stored, transported, applied to crops, and again, the bent pyramid was utilized to convert the aqueous ammonia solution into this more practical ammonium bicarbonate. All right, everyone, we have reached the conclusion of today's video, episode six, the function of the bent pyramid. Again, this was just intended as a brief introduction to the structure. There are some very sophisticated details that are involved in the operation of the structure. And in the future, I do intend to make uh, individual videos discussing the function of each component in detail. But I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, the Bennett Pyramid is one of my favorite structures in Egypt. It is very unfortunate that this amazing structure is so forgotten in the conventional narrative of Egyptology. But I hope today's video shed some light on the hypothetical function of this beautiful ancient structure. And again, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, again, just a reminder, for everyone that's interested, limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem are now available. I am unbelievably proud of this little novella 
the printed copies of this book are really, really beautiful. Again, I couldn't be happier with how these things turned out. Um, if you'd like to pick up your copy today, my website is www.thelandofchem.com. I really, really sincerely appreciate it. It means the world to me. So thank you all in advance. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. This was episode six, The Function of the Bent Pyramid. If you liked the video, definitely leave it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem YouTube channel. If you are enjoying these videos, stay tuned. I have a whole lot more coming up very soon. Again, my website is www.thelandofchem.com. If you'd like to check it out and pick up your copy of the book today, and please follow me on Instagram at the land of chem. It means so much to me that you guys are enjoying and watching these videos. Uh, it's very, very cool to see all the comments. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, any topics that you'd like for me to cover more in depth, please let me know. Again, thank you all so much for your interest and comments and for all of you that have purchased the copy of the book. It really means a lot to me. So until next time, we'll see you. Thank you guys.